Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you one of my favorite tricks, uh, especially since I'm going to be going back to trim full time for 2021. Uh, 2020 has been a really fun year, a very challenging year, um, lots of new highs and lows, and it's enabled me to experience new things in business with furniture, and I've kind of started to realize where more of my niche is in trying to actually make a living and where I'm having fun. My passion definitely lies in furniture, but definitely woodworking in general and even trim carpentry. So I've always told people, you know, don't necessarily follow your passion, but make sure to take it with you everywhere you go. So with that said, I wanted to show you one of my favorite techniques um, when it comes to trim carpentry and that is to do with coping. And coping can be done with uh, baseboard, it can be done with small moldings, and it can also be done with crown molding. Each one's a little bit different, um, but the technique is still roughly the same. So today I want to show you one of my favorite tools that I use for coping, um, things that make me faster, which makes me more efficient, um, and, and time is very precious on a job site. So the faster I can be while still maintaining a really high quality is exactly what I'm gonna be aiming for. Now, when I first learned how to cope, I actually did it on a small coping saw. However, I find that to be quite slow. It is probably more reasonable when it comes to smaller moldings as they can be quite fragile. Um, however, this right here is one of my favorite tools. So this is the Festool Carvex, it's the PS420, and this is their corded version. This also comes in a battery version, if you're interested. Um, but what really makes this is this uh, base here, and this is a Collins coping foot. And the Collins coping foot allows me to essentially roll and get a nice angle underneath the molding. As a regular base is going to be flat, this allows me to put a slight angle, say about 15 degrees, give or take. Two other key features for me, uh, particularly with this jigsaw, is that you can hit this lever here and the base is removable, so you can put a flat base on here if you're doing a different kind of cut. And also you will notice that there's two LED lights. Now these LED lights turn on when the jigsaw is in the upright position, but when you turn it upside down, the lights will actually shut off, so you don't get completely blinded like some other jigsaw brands. Okay, so here we have our piece of base. This is a one inch thick piece of base. Most of your material is only gonna be three quarters of an inch. And the height of this is actually eight and five eighths. This was a one by 10. And this is uh, poplar wood. So most base you might find is either finger jointed poplar or finger jointed pine. But all the technique, including MDF, it's all the same. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to 45 the inside corner. And the same goes for measuring. It's gonna be exactly the same as mitering. The advantage to coping is that the joint is always tight even if you're not completely square. So after cutting the 45 here on the base, I like to run the chop saw at a 15 degree angle right along this edge until I get to this point because this is a straight line. So that just makes me slightly more efficient. There's no need to actually physically cope this part with a jigsaw here when you could just cut that all the way up to this point here with a chop saw. And then what we're gonna be primarily focusing on is this molding section here at the top. So now you can see I've cut a straight line across here which is perfectly straight. And sometimes your material might have a cup in it and so you'll take off more material here in the middle, or it might have a bow and you might take off more at the top and bottom, and you can always fine tune this with the jigsaw, but if your material is nice and straight, and it's flat on the saw surface, you will get a nice straight line. And then I just stop here at the top of the molding. Now sometimes it might be slightly difficult to see the difference between the raw wood and the primed wood. And the same is if this isn't primed and this whole thing might be raw, then it's even harder to see. So you can take a pencil and just take this carpenter's pencil here and you can just run this along the edge and it gives you a definitive line here between the two. So that way when you're cutting it with a coping foot, it just gives you some more of a reference to go off of. Now before we dive straight into the coping foot, you always want to think how am I going to tackle this easiest? Sometimes you might want to make relief cuts. 
So we may take this jigsaw here and we may make a line that goes straight across. And this is just going to be a relief cut to take out this bulk. Then I can come across this way and make a relief cut here. So then I have one single square cut across there and then we'll work on taking this bulk of material out here. Okay, so I have my workpiece clamped down to my MFT table here. And the only setting that you will need to know is that the pendulum setting should be on zero. And when we come into this, we are going to go through and we're going to push through the material. And then we're going to go in a slight rocking back and forth motion. Now I'll have my right hand holding the jigsaw here and you can put your left hand underneath to support and you'll see that I'll just have my thumb here on the side so it's not going to be anything dangerous my fingers aren't in the way it's completely safe I'm out of the way of the cutting and we are pushing away from the body Just like that, you've managed to cope a joint. Now as time goes on, you begin to get faster, you begin to get more comfortable, and you'll notice here that I left probably about a sixteenth on the top here. Most guys just end up cutting this off, and that's completely okay, but you will be left with a slight gap at the top. However, if you leave this a sixteenth, you can go to the next piece of base and just notch out the top and then it'll go together seamlessly. Now if we simulate this as a piece that has been on the wall, and this is our coped piece, when you put these together, this is why you can go exact measurement, or you can go a touch long and essentially snap the piece into the wall. Don't do it too tight, because if you snap it in too tight, you can actually push the drywall. So there is a fine line, and again, practice makes perfect. But as you can see here, the joint is nice and tight. And now I can tweak these little uh, hairlines here. If I'm not happy with them, I can fine tune. It might be the wall that's a little bit out of square so I can move the other piece of base. I can also fine tune these a little bit more. Um, again, if you're in a production environment, you may not necessarily be as worried about these super duper thin hairlines. If you're doing stain grade, then of course you might want to tune those up a little bit. Um, but again, this is just to show you the very basics of coping base. So I hope that you enjoyed this basic tutorial of how to cope. There's more in detail about how to work a joint. There's different tools that you can use such as files and rasps, um, even the basic carpenter's pencil so you can make a definitive line. Uh, Collins does make a coping foot for most brands. I do have one on a DeWalt battery jigsaw. I just don't favor it as it does have two bright lights that do not shut off when they're upside down and I just can't bring myself to poke out the lights just in case I do need it when the jigsaw is right side up. Um, so again, this has been one of my favorites. This is a controversial jigsaw, I think, in the festival world as the dust collection is not exactly as great as most of their other tools. It is a jigsaw, so I honestly don't use dust collection as it is. 
As far as the blade goes, you can tighten up this bolt here at the bottom and it's essential that you adjust these guides in the back. Then that will have no movement in the blade whatsoever. I think this is a very common issue. Uh, people don't realize that you have to adjust this and with the gold Carvex Festival blade here, which is thick, this is actually meant for doing curves. So I honestly don't get any deflection and I've really enjoyed using this jigsaw here over the last four years. So with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed today's coping trim lesson. If you're interested in more videos, please let me know. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section.